Hello, all the people out there in internet land. I'm Benny Goodman, and I'm 2020 in you on my own By show. By attempting to do a radio voice, this is really jarring to me. This is the NPR version of 2020. No, I, I, this, this is actually... This is this this is literally the time that I'm actually thinking before I'm saying anything. And the reason I'm speaking so slowly is because I'm not thinking and about coherently. anything. <laughs> yeah. I'm not thinking about anything. <laughs> but that said, my name's Benny Goodman, and I'm here with my lovely cohort in crime. I love that word cohort, as people noticed. Um, her name is Siobhan Cronin. Hi. hi. Hi Siobhan. How are you? Doing pretty well. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for asking. And then um, not to be confused with just being a bass player, with just being a guy that turns knobs, with just being the glue that holds Siobhan and my existence together. But really, he's kind of like the event horizon for Lost Symphony. Um, you know, he's right at the edge. Corey Pesa. It's very abstract, but I'll take it. I'll take it. It's good to be here. <laughs> this week, just like the abstract nature of this opening, we have Rodolfo Zuniga, who... It has taken on the abstract nature of jazz. Yes. So it's very, yeah. it's, you know, you get to hear Siobhan and, and Rodolfo have these amazingly detailed uh, and interesting discussions as Ben and I try to grasp what the hell's going on and uh, make, <laughs> make terrible jokes throughout, I assume. But don't be worried, though, because it's not, you know, if you're not a jazz musician, do not be <laughs> no. alienated by well, this intro no. because we talk about a lot more than just that. Well, here's the thing that people don't, and I say here's the thing a lot, too. I've been listening to myself and like, just like all of you, I wince through every moment of it. So I, I'm sorry ahead of time. But... <laughs> Just like jazz, everything that Rodolfo says is a giant surprise. Like jazz is just a surprise music. Like surprise, different key. Surprise, <laughs> different note. Surprise, you're staying at the nicest hotels in the world, playing with the biggest musician that's literally like the Beatles, but now in in, in Spanish speaking countries and and other countries. Like you, this dude went to Russia, and they treated him like he was the fucking man like he was Putin's boy because of <laughs> Julio Iglesias they're Julio fans he's Julio down by the schoolyard yeah what I like about this episode is if you've ever been to a massive concert for for like a headlining artist and you've looked behind that artist at the group of people making all the music and you've wondered like I wonder what they do with their lives this is the episode where you kind of get to to hear about that yeah and he's just you know such a down-to-earth well-rounded musician and like a very cool person you know a lot of great stories about behind the scenes and jazz and different types of musicians and personalities and you know if you haven't checked out part one of course he talks a lot about his background but you know in here we really get into a lot more about tour life with julio and you know what it's like working with him and a lot of the different people that he takes on his tour so well i also definitely check it out realized a lot what Rodolfo and Siobhan have in, in common because at first I thought he was only a drummer and you know uh, there's a hierarchy it's a little bit above a bass player just but a it, drummer not also a musician well right just a drummer a, a person that hangs out with musicians it's te technical definition and then he's all casual about it but then I go back and I watch some of his music that he composed every instrument every note every part and it's literally the most I, I call straight up shenanigans like this dude is like a, a prophet to like crazy town as far as the stuff that he writes like I rarely am awestruck with the talent of somebody and to be bestowing it upon a drummer. Like yeah, well, he's one of those people that like he'll say like, oh, yeah, I flew back from Uzbekistan this morning and then I ran the Miami Marathon. And then, yeah, I have to be at a rehearsal this afternoon and like maybe a gig tonight. Like he's somebody that just gives everyone a run for their money. So <laughs> Rodolfo so we Zaniga. Oh, dude. No, 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 no. I usurped you. Go okay. for it. No, I was going to say, here we go again. Part two with Rodolfo Zuniga. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of 2020, where we might be socially distant, but we certainly are socially relevant. Thank you for joining our horde of assholes, as Rodolfo is called, all jazz musicians. So that, that probably doesn't mean doesn't mean that we are, because I don't play jazz, even though I'm Benny Goodman. Do that math. But I'd like to introduce 
the other assholes on my dais, um, Corey Peza. Thank you. Uh, who's a bass player, so it's redundant. <laughs> Surprisingly, <laughs> she, can, she can be this way. She's actually not an asshole. Siobhan Cronin, thank you for being with us. And thank the you. amazing, incredible drummer, musician, Philosopher, both. You're a drummer and Import. musician. Right. Congratulations. There's a joke well, there. Yeah, that's a, that's, you caught it. What, well, I was, I was gonna say, what do you call people that hang out with musicians? Drummers. Drummers. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. This uh, whole hour have, is gonna be drummer jokes. Rodolfo <laughs> Zuniga. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Been a pleasure. So let me ask you, Rodolfo, are, are the drummers usually the same people in the jazz bands? What do you mean? Like, well, because in rock and roll. You have like it's like kind of like Street Fighter Two, where all the different characters like somebody has more endurance, somebody has more dexterity, someone has more strength. In the the jazz world, what player has the highest level of neurosis? Oh on average, God, just the average. A... Like like bass players walk in and you go, they're just gonna throw the bass down. Right, right, right. I think I mean, it's like, a... you, you told me some pretty crazy stories already. Yeah. I want to know. And and let's go back to my initial comment. I think it's like across the board. <laughs> like all, all, everybody, it's just personalities. Speaking. Yeah, yeah. I've had because because the leader role in jazz changes a lot. If you write the music, then you're the leader. If you call the guys for the gig, you're the leader. So I think it's it's um, whoever's the leader usually is. But I've had all kinds of experiences. You know, well, you you, you pointed yeah. out something to us that Corey and I were disturbed by because we're both guitar players. Or well, <laughs> now I'm a guitar player. Uh, I, I, I <laughs> whatever dabble. suits. Whatever well, no, suits no, you were, no, 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 you were a guitarist, <laughs> but you you're a bass player in our band because we have too many guitarists. So <laughs> you've lowered yeah. yourself down. You've dumbed yourself down for our our, <laughs> our band Lost Symphony, LostSymphony.com, <laughs> chapter one, chapter two, LostSymphony.com. Um, but what, what I was asking is basically, um, you know. You told me about a piano player that just walked off because the guitar player had two amps. And we <laughs> talked about how we used to bring giant stacks back in the day because there wasn't all this technology, but now you have Kempers and Axe Effects and like a little boss thing that actually sounds badass. Like our buddy Satchel and Steel Panther plays on like a five inch Marshall. You know what I mean? <laughs> but you told me this disturbing fact that like guitar players are now bringing two amps to jazz coffee shops and gigs and all that. Yeah. Has there ever been a jazz band that was led by a guitarist? Because it sounds to me like there's a coup d'etat about to be. Right. Because yeah. guitar no, players think, are taking over and I don't I like think that. You're, yeah, I think you're right. I think the guitar player, um, the guitar player stereotype kind of exists in the jazz world as well about that. About like a little bit taking over, and I do, you do know some that are like that for sure. Do you have like eight, a guy show up with an eight string, and like you just see your <laughs> bass player just going like? <laughs> no, because the only eight string guitar player that actually plays in my band, and Siobhan knows this guy Tom Lippincott yeah. is such is such a nice guy. He's and so he's so the good opposite. too. Well, that's the tone opposite. is amazing. You, you want to know why? You want to know why those guys play eight string? Because. They actually need the extra strings. <laughs> we play, the only reason I'd ever play an eight string, which I wouldn't, I'd play a seven string if I was gonna do this, is just because I'm too lazy to detune my guitar to play typo negative or corn. <laughs> but like, when you're as good as Tosin Abasi, or you're as good as, I'm sure, your, your, your jazz player, because we, if you watched our previous podcast, and if you haven't, then get, get the on, fuck it. on it. Get the fuck on it. Get the fuck, thank you, Siobhan. Yeah. <laughs> All um, right. You That's would know that, 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 playing, that playing jazz is the ultimate, like it's the ultimate level of musicianship. And that if, if, if you think you're good at rock or if you think you're good at classical, challenge yourself in the real world with the jazz musicians. Oh, like Personality all of wise us, as well. All of yes. us classical players that have played with Rodolfo Rodolf have almost had yeah. meltdowns under yeah. pressure of like trying to keep up with the time signature. Well, there's I know. no charts. There's no charts. No, there no, is well, charts there, for them. There yeah. are charts. But it's, oh, they make you charts. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. he spoils us and makes us charts. But yeah, even so, it's like... Do you write the charts yourself, Rodolfo? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and so... Rodolfo, also, like, secretly can do everything. He's so See, humble, he won't admit to it, but he literally can do anything. He's like I the super. I don't know about that. Definitely yeah. So, so uh, is it fair to call you a drummer? Because you you know, it seems to know more about music than I do. And if you can write out charts, you've already surpassed anything that I... I mean, look, everyone's saying, hey, Lost Symphony is so good, because we are. Um, but I don't know how to write out a chart 
other than like these little crappy. Like this, like, let me show you the, the the equivalent of my chart. That's my chart, dude. That's that's what I do. <laughs> it's like A to A to B to A to B to C. So like that's that's what I do. So that's like, helpful. are you telling me as a drummer, not only did you start drums at sixteen, you play baseball better than me, but you you're from a different country and you're more successful than me, even yeah. in a country that's not your own. <laughs> Yeah, I, no, I, I mean, why, why you gotta, why you gotta lay it on me, dude? No, no, I mean, first of all, I thought uh, we were cool, man. <laughs> well, first of all, I think there's tons of uh, great drummer composers, and uh, and Name I mean, one. everybody plays all instruments now. I can't do Phil that. Collins. I play drums, period. Yeah, but everybody plays now bass and drums. Have you seen this guy uh, Nate Wood? From no. The, Oh my God! Well, if you get a chance, I mean, he plays drums and bass at the same time, like the hardest. <gasps> oh, I've music seen you've these guys. Heard. Like, yeah, like like Paul Paul Lorenzo in our band. He plays like he'll play like a moog on the side, and he'll play and he and he'll do like you know one thing like a kick drum thing, and he'll be playing keyboards or whatever. Yeah. But then there's some of these yeah. guys that have like a harmonica, and then they have you know back here yeah. keyboard one, keyboard two, and then a guitar that's like on a stand. Yeah, well, it's the YouTube is, world, man. Like this, that's what we were talking about the other day. Is that these people watch YouTube yeah. and they go playing drums is not enough. I got to play the whole band. Yeah, mm -hmm. like do you control. like that? Like is is that? Yeah. Do you think to yourself you want to play bass at the same time? Because I know that none of the bass lines I want to play can I play drums and bass at the same time. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not into that. It's amazing to me, but and and especially Nate Wood, I love just because he's such a consummate, great musician all around. He's a, he's a jazz guy in New York, but. But no, nah, I mean, I could never do that. I have enough with just with just <laughs> drums and the writing music and stuff. That's definitely a a work in progress. I've been doing it for a long time, but I still feel like I'm so amateur at so it. So who who inspires you to write? So like you said, you're a composer, which to me again is a very different thing than being a drummer. Um, again, drummer joke number seven. Just kidding. Yeah. I love drummers. In fact, uh, uh, you know the reason I know so much about drummers. You know, like I'm, I'm, we're talking about Frank you Zappa's drummers. That, yeah. Well, it's because I'm obsessed with drummers. I'm obsessed yeah. with them. Like the whole reason I, I went and saw Nine Inch Nails was I I saw Elon Rubin. Um, I don't know if you know him. He's he's yeah, a crazy yeah. multi instrumentalist. He learned violin by the way to go on that tour, Siobhan, So you know this drummer learned to play violin to play a part on Nine Inch Nails because he's like we should all be multi instrumentalists and he <laughs> plays everything ridiculous. Wow. Yeah. So I want to know as a composer, let's forget just this the the POV of uh, drummer as a composer. Who inspires you or who made you want to compose and who influenced like the surfaces stuff that you're doing? That's uh, Rodolfo's band. Like, who do you think about? Like, for me, it's Freddie Mercury or, you know what I mean? Like, I listened to Freddie Mercury and that was the guy that taught me that I wanted to play piano and everything stemmed from that. Who was the guy for you? Um, or girl? Right. Yeah. For composer, for composer, it was this bass player named Dave Holland. He was like the first guy who got me into playing odd meters and things like that. So I started transcribing his music, and that's kind of how I got into play, into writing my own music. Was okay, so, if I so can like understand. Steve Vai to Frank Zappa, yeah. you are to Dave Holland. Yeah, pretty much exactly the same story, ex except I've never actually played with Dave, but but I but I love his music. So through his through transcribing is how I realized. Okay, well. Just how same as I do playing, which is like you learn by you learn playing by copying people you love. Mm -hmm. I started doing the same thing, writing. I'm gonna copy this format, but write my own tunes, and then that developed into learning more. Um, but it was through transcribing. That's and so cool listen, because just, I just because I ahead, showed I you this. I was gonna say just because I showed you this does not mean you can rip it off. Just oh, so Jesus you know, I'll know it was you, I'll know it was you. No, but that's that's so cool. And that's that's something that like transcriptions is something I totally missed out on in classical music education, because, you know, we'll do theory training or you learn how to play the music, but almost never do you transcribe anything complicated by ear. You know, and I feel like that's a good point. You learn a lot by just studying, by yeah. by doing like even listening to compositions or reading about composers or like whatever. It, it really is just kind of borrowing stuff until you establish your own voice. And I think yeah, but even with jazz education, I feel like you are totally. encouraged to write your own stuff too. That's part of the yeah. yeah. See, there's none of that in classical music. It's it's never like oh yeah, here write your own sonata form piece and perform in class. Never. It's all you, everyone else's music. But you are doing it a lot now. 
well with the, with the with the solo the guitar solos yeah well th but that's why i wanted to do it is because i'm like okay i'm in my 30s yeah. now and i'm on lost symphony and they're telling me oh yeah try to write a solo and i'm like what the fuck i don't know how to write a solo <laughs> so i was like i gotta learn the language so that's part of the whole thing is that like yeah great, but that's great that's awesome that's no, the, but, it's, it's the same uh, thing can yeah. i just tell you how how happy it makes me to see you learning all that so if every all of our listeners and watchers and Rodolfo, if you, have, if you haven't followed Siobhan online, I'm sure you do. Um, the covering all these amazing guitar solos. Yeah, so she, no, she's and, and and here's the thing. So when I worked with Siobhan in the studio, I realized that even the greatest guitarist still pale in comparison to her virtuosity, <laughs> and that the fact that she can go learn an As I Lay Dying solo or a Jason Becker solo, whatever she is, and like. A weekend where it would take me a lifetime to get the <laughs> technique to do that. I, but I think it's great because, but it's very interesting to someone like myself. And I know Corey and I love when people are like this because we, it's like having your own uh, like drum machine, but you're a real drummer, like our own violin machine. Because we'd be like, Siobhan, <laughs> yeah, just play totally. the next line. And she goes, okay. And she plays it perfectly harmonically. She just knows you have to do a whole step instead of a half step because that's just harmonically correct and obviously the mode we're playing in. So like <laughs> she's composing things, but not even taking credit for it really because she's just arranging our idea. But she plays in real time and it was wonderful to actually make her realize that she's capable of doing this because... With all those skills, you would think that you would be writing tons of stuff, and she's just never had someone say, "Can you do that?" Just like the the Char uh, the Charlie Daniels thing, you know what yeah. I mean? Like no one ever put you on the spot, but when we put you on the spot, even though it was not necessarily what we thought of, it was great. Yeah, well, and I'm and, so and, thankful and for that because that's awesome. and it comes back to like saying yes to stuff and and doing gigs and just doing yeah, practice exactly. because as soon as you commit yeah. to having to do it for someone else, I feel like another thing kicks into gear, and that's when you're learning without realizing it. You know, is it's like. It's just like an assignment, but it's in life. <laughs> well, but that goes back to versatility because you are a little bit out of the norm. Maybe correct me if I'm wrong in the in the classical world. No, it's in that true. Way. It's true. You are. I mean, you play piano great. You play violin great, and you're very open-minded. I and think open-minded. Yeah, that that definitely sets you apart in both the jazz and the classical yeah. world. <laughs> yeah, and you've you've done a lot of studio work, so that mm -hmm. always is a great. You know, way to to learn how to do new things. Well, that's and the quick. fun thing with yeah. that's the fun thing with Siobhan is that she can just show up and be like, "Oh, I played with Rod Stewart." You know, like, do you think I'm sexy? Like, uh, oh, I play with Michael Bublé. <laughs> Have you ever played the pyramids or the Colosseum? <laughs> like, and the thing is, is that because she's so talented, but she's humble about it. Like I said, I wish this is why God didn't give me the talent because I would be flipping my sticks. I would be going out there all the time playing like, hey, do you, you want to meet me? And then I'd be playing Paganini's 24th Caprice as fast as I can. You know what I mean? Like, so that's why, that's why all I can do is yell. I'm good at that. Oh Very my gosh. Good. You're Let's good go. at a lot really of things good. then. <laughs> <laughs> that means a lot coming from you because I know you've dealt with a lot of neurotic people. Oh my I've gosh. I've never walked off stage uh, with playing piano because a guitar player was too loud. Never oh, done right. it. Yeah, never, I've sure. actually never walked off stage ever because I was mad. Yeah. yeah, I've seen that a few times. It happens. Wow. I We've all dealt with neurotic people. I think that's just, you know, classic musicians. It's like everybody's got something. <laughs> You know, it's true. Artists, period. Artists, like, let's make period. it holistic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 There's got to be something wrong to make it right for other people to relate to. Yeah. But that's why yeah. you have to be flexible. I mean, you know, people like us that are like kind of the nice people in the, in the <laughs> industry, it's like it helps if you can tolerate a lot of that stuff because you, you just know how to deal with it after a certain amount of time. And you're like, okay, part of the gig. <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's one of the main reasons I'm still in the, in the, in the Julio tour is just. Don't For take, those that don't, don't know, Julio Iglesias right. yeah. has this man playing drums for him. And I got to ask you, what's it like at a show? Do people even know who you are or are they so obsessed with Julio that you could you walk through the crowd two seconds after? Because we've talked to a lot of musicians that have played in huge bands and they're like, dude, nobody knows who we are. Like, they don't care. They're there for that one guy. So I wonder, like, do you play a giant stadium gig or like a huge gig where everyone goes is speaking Spanish and the, the, and they still just ask you to hold the door open as Julio comes out to sign autographs? Pretty much, <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> but but actually now years after, um, yeah, there are some people that follow him along on certain parts of the world that come to every show that actually have become like. Super good friends with the band, and they actually now come 
for the hang with the band. I mean, they still love him, mm -hmm. his music, but actually, there's a big. What's group the of hang people. like with you guys? So, like, what's Julio's band like? Yeah, I mean, Paul Simon's been asking about it for a long time. Tell me about Julio <laughs> down the yard. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, I, everybody, I mean, the majority of the guys were jazz guys, so and so we kind of like share that and we just hang out so and like so, have so, some beers so and chill out after the show you know for a spanish band you're mainly jazz people because i feel like every yeah. time i see someone like rihanna or i see like lady gaga they have these like like repressed metal bands because <laughs> like you go see or even beyonce it's like you know like oh you think you're ready no this jelly finger tapping solo for some guy with long hair and no shirt and like walks off fire <laughs> beyonce starts dancing again and you're like what the fuck and then you realize that everyone wants to rock out is it with Spanish music, is it like they just want to jazz out? <laughs> like jazz hands? No, but I think that uh, Julio is different, I think, because he, his, well, he was based out of Miami for a long time. Mm. So I think Can there I was a big scene here in the 80s and 90s with like the Gloria Stefan sound mm -hmm. machine and uh, Julio and other, you know, John Cicada, those kind of artists in the 80s. I think a lot of people came out of Miami, so he kind of has... And a lot of those people went to University of Miami, the jazz program and things mm -hmm. like that. So I think that's where that scene kind of stayed. It's a little bit different. I mean, I think each scene has their own pool of musicians. I know like the gospel scene has taken over a lot of the touring groups in the R&B scene. But even some of the pop artists, like Michael Buble always had a jazz combo. Well, well yeah. it was but more Buble, big band, but... Yeah. Buble yeah. is like big band jazz. Yeah, but, that's true. But, like, that's yeah. true. I think uh, maybe I'm just not like uh, maybe more Enrique Iglesias <laughs> is my generation. So like I'm more yeah. La Vida Loca. So Loco, Loco, I'm not Loca. You're Loca. You're Loca. No, um, La Vida but that's Loca. That's Ricky, Ricky Martin. That's Ricky Martin. Yeah. Oh, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't know but, yeah. any of it. That's what I'm saying. But I think, yeah. okay, but I think to myself, I don't think jazz when I think of jazz. Uh, yeah, yeah. of spanish music so how 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 is it that you guys are all jazz players is it because you're better than rock musicians and you've gotten to that level where it's like you're like me right right now where i'm learning jazz chords and i'm going this is so much cooler than playing nirvana because i'm doing interesting things <laughs> whereas so is that yeah. why he has a jazz band like do you play jazz behind him or do you play like better yeah, I music th i think than there's us? two two aspects to that one of them is that yeah his music is Definitely more, more into the Frank Sinatra, but in Spanish. So a little more mm. into the jazz big, world. Big bandy jazz. Not big bandy, but more like. Because I think big band Frank Sinatra. Small, small. Yeah, I know. Um, it's more like more like small combo kind of thing. Yeah. But also, okay. but also, I think it comes from like just like the experience and the handling of a ton yeah. of music. I mean, it's like 150 songs in the repertoire. You can't read anything, and the set list he never follows after the third song ever so you have to does he do that deliberately to keep middle. you on the toes is that like 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 prince making his band watch the show afterwards to yell at them about the notes they miss like who julio's like you know what let's totally fuck with these guys i'm gonna make the encore the third song he's like that yeah we do the craziest your light like guys much stage. love yeah, that, him. That keeps it fresh, though. It's it's better than a than an artist that just has the same show in every city, right? Yeah, he's never yeah. like that ever. I mean, the set list looks the same yeah. every show, but <laughs> but it's just a facade. Nothing. I mean, it's a facade. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> after the after the third song is like two more hours of craziness following him on every at every step oh it makes sense so, if i were julio I'd, i mean if i as me i yeah. would hire jazz players because yeah you are like prepared for anything i mean yeah well isn't that the idea like so you're saying like so for those again who didn't watch our previous podcast as siobhan aptly said get the fuck on it <laughs> but that like <laughs> one of the things with jazz is it's such rapid fire changes of uh, of feel, beat, uh, uh, you know, uh, key. You don't even necessarily know what key you're in. So I guess that makes sense that if you have somebody who's up there freestyling it, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, here's here's the first three songs and then like, follow me, motherfuckers. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I guess maybe you have to play jazz because like, 
how the hell do you yeah. play follow anybody unless you're used to playing jazz? Because I can't follow that music. So if you can follow, like I can't listen to it and follow it. <laughs> Nevertheless, play over it. No, but here's my, so I have so much reverence for you. Here's my yeah. question, though, because, okay, for us and for most ensembles or bands, like I'm super reliant on the drummer because a lot of those fills or whatever lead-ins or things that I listen for. So if the song is changing, how do you, like, you've got to be the first person to know, right? Like, how do you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, luckily, okay. luckily, I'm right next to him the whole okay. night. And he doesn't count off any music. It's all signals and things. Does he have good rhythm, though? Uh, he doesn't move all that much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like singing wise. Like, does he ever speed up and slow down? You're like, dude, you're going like. Yeah, oh, he does. Yeah. And, and you got to follow him. And of course, a lot of the music we have sequences and stuff. So it's such, it's it's crazy. Well, that's like, what I'm saying. If you have these light sh shows, and you're going to a click track, and all of a sudden yeah. he's like, let's just slow it down. Yeah, he <laughs> does. He does stuff like that, and he wants you to stop the track seamlessly oh yeah and, the, and i have to do all that stuff and put it back on when he wants to and i mean it sounds it's like nuts. anxiety what do you what are it's you running nuts. for for when you, what, what manages all that is it like ableton or is it all uh it's a something. digital performer because yeah, yeah. the, it was like that yeah from before and they have yeah. so i'm i'm actually a little curious uh because we talked a little while ago about how a lot of pop artists that you know 90 percent of their uh, recording sessions and their and their music that's on the radio is is basically MIDI and and program stuff, but they go out with a live band, uh, right. and and I've always just felt like every every type of music can be a rock show uh, it, that can fit you know to a certain level. Obviously, you know you, you keep the dynamics where they need to be, but uh, as far as the recording music versus the live performance with with him when you're on tour, do you guys do anything that that brings it up a level or or alters the the vibe obviously while keeping it accessible to the audience it's yeah it's hard to say because he has 50 years of yeah. songs in there yeah so Ow. so um, so are you are you are, are, are you some, modernizing anything or is it yeah, yeah 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 so we're just playing our version of something that's already there so some songs yeah. have a lot of stuff on it and you're just embellishing some songs have just a, a, a keyboard track that he liked. Well, yeah. let me ask you this: so if you have to learn, years ago, <laughs> yeah. so it's if you have every to have a different, right? If you have yeah. to have a rotating memory of 50, uh, 50 years worth of music, like do you ever learn a Julio song and then forget "Heartbreaker" by Zeppelin? Like does it just go out of your brain? You're like, oh, I gotta learn this, but then I, now I have no more space for yeah. Rush. <laughs> Man, I think about that a lot. Um, I, it, because I do have to memorize so much. That was music. actually a serious question. Like, yeah. I, I, I think some yeah. people might not realize that, but like, no, I, I can relate to that. that stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like sometimes, like you might, you might forget how to play Y Y Z. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I just try to. I don't give it a chance. I try to prepare for every show, even if I know that Always I know the music. I still got to get in the mindset, review the thing, and with Julio, the other thing is like. I got to learn the number of the sequence in the file to change it quickly. So not, oh. not only do I have to memorize the song, play, press stop, change the song, play live, but I also got to remember the number, which is a random number, 37 <laughs> for so, so, so because yeah. he might want to change that song. So I got to put it in the dial, the number of the song, so it pulls pulls it up in real time. So I have so much information that if I don't, prepare before so what you're saying is that you're yeah. like rain yeah. man are you like spectrum <laughs> no but that's that's why they have so many so many drummers in that band is because it's a lot it's to not a, be responsible it's not for. A, yeah it's not even the well you said yet. digital performer you said it in a way like i inherited the last drummer after he spontaneously <clears throat> combusted yeah a lot of setup it is pretty yeah. common now for the drummer to to have to uh, basically run shows like run the you know show, like yeah, back yeah. back in the day the drummer would just drink a fifth of jack and get out there and play yeah. four, four on the floor <laughs> yeah. or something but now you got to be able to program something halfway through and then you know start it stop yeah. it yeah so we have a we have a digital audio guy on tour but once the show starts is he's just on the sidelines just watching yeah. and it's just up to me <laughs> basically <laughs> yeah so do your like light guys and sound guys, do they go like, are they like masochists where they go, bring it on Julio, fucking change the song. I'll get the lasers right on. So, like they're into it. Like they love the fact, or are they just like, I'm not getting paid enough for this shit, man. Cause like, I feel like, I feel like if yeah. you came in to record something and then you played a different song, I'd be like, get the fuck out of my studio. Whereas like, I feel like you are all masochists because you yeah. 
<laughs> anticipate <laughs> this and knowingly still say yeah. yes. Yeah, it's that's why you know they warned me many times about what I was getting into and why I prepared so much and why I was prepared to get fired immediately because a lot of people do. Um, but prepared to get fired. But the money, the money's great. So that's that's the motivating. <laughs> Part. Everybody, that's why you remember 37. <laughs> yeah, that's why everybody has got that eye on the prize. But it's I also like, think people like yeah. you and me like the challenge. Like, I love nothing more like than when it. something, I mean, I don't want to say that I love it, but I, I enjoy when things kind of change a little bit because then I'm like, oh, yeah, this is cool. And now I Dustin, can like do take something. Take notes. <laughs> Let's fuck yeah. with Siobhan. No, Start to talk about this the offline. List. But spontaneity in music is so fun yeah. sometimes. And if you're prepared and you can, you can handle whatever's coming next, I think it can be fun. And a lot of that is lost when something is too programmed, you know? And of course, well, that's that, only yeah. you say that because your whole fucking show is a giant light <laughs> blinking at me. And the only time that you could fuck up is in between. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, of course, if it's, you know, you have to balance between doing the same thing night after night and then doing something that's a little different. Obviously, it's nice to know what's going to be different, but sometimes the spontaneity of something going, to, you know, in a different direction is fun. Yeah, and I'm, I'm actually curious because yeah. uh, the two of you, Siobhan and Rodolfo, you guys are on, you're both touring the world, well, were, um, and you're <laughs> both playing these big <laughs> venues, and, but you're in completely different elements as far as, as, as you know, contemporary versus like this like legendary career uh can you guys compare maybe the uh, whole touring lifestyle or or culture is there are any differences you know of i i i guess starting with star set i mean a lot of us are kind of generationally in the same category i mean we're all kind of young people you know 30s 20s 30s um, but wait, was new. it Xenu 90 billion years old or something like that? So like, hasn't Dustin been around for a really long time? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but I mean, this is also like, relatively speaking in the music world, a new-ish project. I mean, Starset right. has only been around since 2013. So there's been a pretty like steep incline in terms of listenership and you know graduating from smaller venues to bigger venues two so, billion plus and counting yeah so i mean it's been a really quick trajectory and it's also something i've only been around for you know three-ish years so um i don't know maybe rodolfo you can talk about the culture or the maybe some differences that you notice between wait Julio before you move on though siobhan i have a question for you okay so you're at two billion streams now is it going to be like McDonald's where you go up to 99 billion before you just stop counting. <laughs> you know what's so funny? So right after that happened, Dustin <laughs> asked if somebody could, if somebody out there wanted to design the McDonald's logo that's like going that. served. Yeah. Yeah. So See, this just goes to show how smart that guy is. So smart. He already thinks of my he's, joke before I even can say he's it. He's brilliant when it comes to brand like everything. I hate you, Dustin, <laughs> so much, and love you, and want to be in your band, but still hate you. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, but you, you know what though? I mean, all it was all founded completely within the age of the internet and social media. So you have to think of it that way. He right. Starset started right. with the existence of Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and all that stuff. Whereas Julio has been around for a long time, so. It's really hard yeah. to compare generally. Right, and, and that's kind of what I was curious is like, it's like yeah. the old money versus new money. Yeah. Um, like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm kind of curious. Are there young people at the shows for Julio? Like, do you see like 13 year olds or are there lots of generations that come? Like, who goes to a Julio Iglesias show? It depends on where you are in the world. That's mm -hmm. been really funny. Like, if you're in, in, if you're in Mexico or, you know, in Latin America, it's usually older generation for sure. Mm -hmm. if, but if we're in East Europe or the Middle East, there's a lot of young people that look wow. that see it as a as as well as like the older generation, but that see it as this kind of niche thing. Kinda of like like yeah, like if you went out to see Frank Sinatra if he was alive. Kinda uh -huh. of like that. But in Latin America now, nah, Latin America is definitely the older crowd. And as far as the actual touring culture, like the behind the scenes, like what what's what's a day in the life like for you? Ah, it's great. That's the other thing. Yeah. It's like it's we have total freedom. Um, really nice accommodations. Sometimes it is. Yeah. So do you sit? So does he? St so you stay in the ho same hotels as him. So like, it, if he stays at the Ritz Carlton, you're at the Ritz Carlton. It usually the promoters get the hotels. So there's like a, there is a, a criteria that they gotta meet. Mm -hmm. So that's sometimes, pretty standard. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we are in the same hotel. He hates it though. But he tries <laughs> not to. <laughs> um, so, but it's usually really nice. Dustin, take notes. <laughs> no, like, but so, you know, like Siobhan will be at the Holiday Inn, yeah. and Dustin will be staying at like the Waldorf. No, the but Waldorf that's, I, I, have a, I have a friend who toured with Madonna, and that was a similar thing. Like Madonna yeah. was always at a different place than yeah, the rest usually. of the band, even though it was a really nice hotel. You know, they all had like 
five star accommodations, yeah. but yeah, you know, she was still in a different spot. Yeah, it's usually really nice, and you got your own privacy, you got your own room, and you can do basically whatever you want to do on off days. And then on show day, band band starts working around 1 p.m. We start mm -hmm. heading out to the venue. We do like a two hour sound check on our own, and or a one hour and a half, and then like three hours with Julio or more. <laughs> really, before. Before every gig? Before a show? Yeah. On is, that how, is that how long it takes yeah. him to, to warm up? He's uh, old school. And I hear that back in the day, he used to do five-hour sound checks, rehearse everything. Sometimes he wants to. He, sometimes he wants to go over the whole show quick. Let's do the whole show. Like, yeah. just like two minutes of each song. I, 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 work with, I work with singers yeah. that wouldn't sing a day before they had a big show. That, like, yeah, you he's know, not like complete, that. Complete vocal. That's, that's impressive. Yeah, I mean, yeah. sometimes he's just there and he... Yeah, just kind of comes... Yeah, and how's he sound? Is he yeah. consistent still being... He's been around for 50 years as a... as a You know, we're talking about... You know, Siobhan played with Rod Stewart. And I'll tell you, I love Rod Stewart, but his pipes for me are, are getting a little bit not as sexy as they used to be. And I mean, obviously the guy's like 113 years old, so I don't expect him to still sing <laughs> like he used to. Um, but like, there's some people like Sammy Hagar, for example, who's literally, I think, like six months younger than... Keith Richards, and he sounds perfect. It looks amazing. even better than he did in the '80s, which wasn't that yeah, good in the first amazing, place. Yeah. So I mean, he, he, he's fine now. <laughs> but the point is, right. is has Julio aged like a fine tequila? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, he the. Well, I'll tell you this: like, he has better some days better than others, some tours better than others. I mean, he's 76. Jesus, so, good for him. It's, for it's amazing. For him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, so awesome, the, Julio, you freaking rock. And by the way, yeah. I felt bad about the Ricky Martin joke, but I thought that was kind of funny because that because <laughs> Enrique Iglesias came out and and Rick, just so everyone knows it, from the United States perspective, we had Ricky Martin and like I knew about Julio, and then we saw Enrique and we're like, who's copying this Ricky guy? You know what I mean? Like not <laughs> knowing funny. that it's like yeah. the son of Elvis. You know what I mean? Right, like. Right. And and, yeah. and so I just always thought it was funny because I would confuse them, and then it's like no, one of them, you know, is like, hey, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I won't I say mean, which one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, so I mean, he's he's uh, you know, he sounds good. The, just the keys have gotten lower. Yeah, yeah, he, that's that's pretty standard. But I that's think. smart. Yeah. That's, no. There's there's yeah. bands that, that came out with a you know album last year that are doing that. <laughs> that are, yeah, you know yeah. that's. Yeah, so the no, keys have gotten to, way lower. Yeah. I have to say, though, I mean, I think of Starset as being a band that really does tour a lot of places, but some of the places that Rodolfo has been to, like when he'll come back, like I feel like Julio and that your band will go like everywhere. You've been yeah. to like further reaching places in the world than I think we have 50 ever fucking go. years of spreading yeah. the of disease, <laughs> as Anthrax puts it. Well, so, okay, so explain. Uh, uh, so Siobhan has been, so what... So let's let's explain the hierarchy of our feudalistic society again. We have Corey and I, yes. and then like way the fuck up there, is Siobhan. No. Then there's like Madonna, and then there's like Julio Iglesias. <laughs> so where does Julio go? Where Star sets jealous? Because I want to know. Because if I could live Siobhan's life, I'd be a happy clam. Yeah. No, I think we've done a, a lot of the same places. Like, mm -hmm. you know, in, like Russia. We've done at least. I mean, he must have done it like 50 times or more. I've mm -hmm. I've done the the Kremlin with him three times. Mm -hmm. The Kremlin. See, the, you get into like the really niche private. Like they, I, I, he's so he's playing the White House while you're too. playing the back alley of DC. Basically. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> no, but you know, but we, we we also do a lot of. Like, Hold on! You know, don't Dubai. gloss over that. What's it like to play the fucking Kremlin? Like, what is yes. that? What, did they respect you in Russia? And here's something that Corey yeah, has asked like many times, because do you ever use like, oh, I'm, I'm Julio's guy and like get like a free taco somewhere? <laughs> no, I feel like that is so not Rodolfo. No. Because no. I'd be doing I that everywhere. I, I, I walk into Taco Bells everywhere. I'm sure that's so horrible. Be like, yo, I'm playing tonight with Julio. Come down and <laughs> sing. <laughs> no. By the way, I, get me two of those. No, no. Yeah, exactly. No, I mostly chill out after. I just want to go to regular. Can't wait to order some room service or go uh -huh. get a beer. Oh, yeah. does Julio uh, cover the room service? <laughs> promoters. Yeah. Oh, I love promoters, yeah. man. They, they 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 have to cover the hotel stuff. No, that's yeah. great. So it's in the so you're in a band that's so big. The writer says that we even take care of our drummer. 
That's not even the guy that you're going to go see. He just helps the guy. They don't, they don't make you drive the bus. That's good. All right, but let's go yeah. back. Yeah. You asked what it was like to play at the Kremlin. Yeah, the I'm Kremlin, curious yes. because the Kremlin is like protected yeah. territory. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's definitely, you know, you're, I think, I, I think Moscow is amazing. You, you've mm -hmm. probably been there, Siobhan. Yeah. I really, it is amazing. It is really, it's incredible just to see that, that whole, it's like, a, it's culturally so different. Mm -hmm. And, in there, in the Kremlin, it's all about respect and security and all these things. You have to wear a tag everywhere, and like they do. They have wax figures of Putin on like every corner, just like you know, Putin <laughs> just standing there's, there there's without scary, a shirt on top of a, a giant guys. horse. Yeah, that's a funny picture. Yeah, um, there's a lot of scary, scary people in there. You have to be follow the rules. Yeah, and but they really they love him in Russia, so we've done that a lot, but. So you get the respect because Julio's so respected. The even the big scary Russian guy that would normally murder you is like, oh, it's Julio's yeah. buddy down by <laughs> yeah. the yard. He's cool. Oh, and he does all kinds of crazy stuff. He'll, I mean, there's a lot of like, you know, presidents and ministers of culture and all these things. So does he go out to go lunch to with like shows Bono? He doesn't care. He, he goes to like, Ireland. He's like hanging out with Bono, right? You know, or going out with the Pope. Yeah, he'll <laughs> he'll do he'll do whatever he wants to do. It's funny. Like, Have you played the with, Vatican? No, but I'm sure he's he's done everything, man. He's done. Amazing. These guys that have the been in the, the band pyramids, for a long time. The no. Coliseum. What was the crazy? What was the craziest place you've ever played with him? Where you're like, you walked in, and you're like, this is bananas. Or plantains, maybe plantains. This is plantains. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's been a. I mean, all of them have been amazing to me. But like maybe um, some like a real amazing uh, amphitheater we played in Dubai was really like a Coliseum. Was really was really incredible. In Dubai, yeah. But some of the coolest shows were in the Canary Islands to me, in like the the Canary. I don't even like, know of these. Like islands. these are islands part of Spain, and they love them in Spain. So the atmosphere of the the Spanish uh, audience is, like a is like a totally different thing. Yeah, yeah, kind of that vibe. I think cooler, more raw, and yeah, and, uh, so less foam parties and and Avicii. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little less, less, <laughs> less, uh, less of that. So, so wait, what went yeah. on the Canary Islands? We gotta know. Like, does it stay in the Canary Islands? Is that like the Vegas of Spain? Um, no, they're just like they're just like very different atmosphere. The people are very, very excited about it, and that just changes the whole the whole experience because you do feel like you're part of something more, more important for people, I guess. Mm -hmm. And the, the venues were cool. We're like different, like in, right in front of the ocean on some huge area or something. And you That's see crazy. ships pass by or <laughs> just like not the classic amphitheater or stadium kind of thing, but just like different. Yeah. How, different big, how, how big is the touring band? Um, there's like seven of us on stage, but there's a lot of crew. Yes. How, how's the um, culture between everyone? Like the crew, is, are you guys, you know, close or is it more yeah. a, a work event? No, you know? between, between the crew, like production manager, front of house, monitor, and the stage, uh, like, like, you know, the stage people and like everybody gets along great. It's That's like, good. Yeah. The singers are definitely his, his territory. We don't mm -hmm. get to mingle too much with them the background vocalists and all that that's wow that's 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 his 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 so like the, the different hierarchy there's yeah. like yeah. The, like the monitor guy the front of house guy the lighting guy and then there's like the drummer and then there's like singers <laughs> up here no the, the 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 two main people i think for him are the monitor guy and front of house guy you know because it's all about his he's sound. smart he's been doing yeah, it for yeah. 50 years because yeah. i yeah. always say this it's like getting mad at your waiter don't ever yell at someone who could shit in your food. Yeah. If you're going to play in front of 50,000 yeah. people, the last person you want to yell at is Corey. Corey's like, oh yeah? How about we just get rid of all of your 4K? Let's see how that yeah. sounds. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh <laughs> I'm the monitor guy now. <laughs> no, I'm either. Yeah, a, front, a front of house has so much power for sure. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is where your sound come from, comes both, from. Both yeah. And the hardest job on the gig for sure with him. Yeah. That's yeah. why the sound checks are so long because it has to be 
Yeah, I think that's, that's pretty right. pretty common with people that are very particular about what they want. You know, we've had some long sound, long sound checks before, and I mean, yeah, it's understandable. I'm not a vocalist, so it's a totally different experience for me. But, that's surprising you're not yeah. a vocalist. I would have figured you would have said, like, I've been studying under Pavarotti for, like, 15 years, <laughs> and I was going to no. be a vocalist, but I decided that it just wasn't worth it because I was too busy playing piano, but then I realized my real calling was violin and economics. Oh, jeez, no, no. And biology or whatever the fuck else you learned. No, I, I enjoy being a band person. I'm not sure sure that I that I'm much of a well I guess I wouldn't want to be a singer you know but being a front man I think is a totally an ornithologist job description <laughs> someone who likes birds <laughs> of course yeah birds are great. <laughs> I thought you were laughing because you didn't even birds know what it meant and I'm like wait wait she has a really good working <laughs> vernacular she should know what ornithology I is I do I do <laughs> were you laughing that I knew what it was because I'm a guitar player is that the no, joke I was <laughs> laughing that it's totally unrelated to music <laughs> <laughs> But kind of like like you mentioned, Siobhan, and maybe a lot of people don't know, is there is almost a a completely different like level or separation between like that front man and, and the guy whose name is on the billboard and the rest of the band. And it's just like a, a company or a business almost. And the pressure, yeah. the pressures are different and, and the the whole day to day can change. And some people might see you just pop up on stage for an hour and, and do your set and like, wow, that's that's great. You're, you're a rock star. And then it's like, they don't see that. Yeah. You get off stage and then you go sit in your hotel room for 23 hours. And <laughs> while, while maybe the, the guy on the billboards out there living yeah. it up and doing all the press and you know everything. What, here's a, here's a good test. How good is the food backstage? Because I've seen what, what Siobhan gets and it's, it's okay. It's, it's, it's mid tier backstage stuff like listen i'm happy if someone gives me chocolate milk i've made this clear on previous like what are you but, talking about man i got domino's pizza at a star set show that was what, 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 <laughs> what does julio have as far as a spread like, do you guys have like straight up real deal shit like you're going to spain like you're you talking have, about like, the rider or are you talking about the, the catering? rider i mean okay. yeah, the rider probably has crazy catering and that's what i want to know about like what's the backstage area like i'm i'm salivating i'm hungry right now is what it comes down no, <laughs> tell no, me about the, it the the backstage stuff is that the the, the the same thing everybody has, like fruit and sandwiches mm -hmm. and stuff. But the catering, it depends on where, you know? Like, yeah. Like Where's the best in, food, Rodolfo? Yeah, like if, for me, as like in Israel, that's where I love... The, the sushi! Wait, did, did, yeah, did you sushi's sushi? amazing! This reminds me, yeah, so we had, was it Richard that was yeah. talking about that? Yeah, Rich, so Richard Shaw, the guitarist from uh, Cradle of Filth, was talking about how Israel has great sushi because he had a hilarious story oh, really? about that. But, <laughs> but yeah, that, I feel like I've heard that many times that Israel what, has... What do you like oh about God. the food in Israel? Because I've been there so multiple good. times and I love the food. Are you like a falafel guy? Because obviously that's yeah. like the falafel house. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah just the, the pita and the hummus there. Like you've never had this stuff. Until oh, you have had, had fresh that. and olives. Fresh Here's the other thing: is I'm an olive, like I love olives, yeah, yeah. and like they're on the side of the road, dude. They're everywhere, and like you wake up in the morning and like you go to the hotel, like you stay at like at, at uh you know the King David Hotel, and they have a, a breakfast. You go to a breakfast spread out here, and then, like you got your coffee and your like your donuts and all. They have like dates, like. 15 types of olives, like a bunch yeah. of like dragon fruit. And you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then the, the, the hummus and the yeah, pita, man. like that's like, there's so much of it. You're just like, I'm sick of it within like a day. You're like, give me something else. And they're like, cool. This is stuff with camel. Oh, okay. I'll go back to the hummus. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, so it depends on where on where you are. Also, Mexico. I love Mexico. Mexico, We've been there yeah. A bunch. Yeah, the food's so amazing. Mexico, there especially. Too. It's funny you say breakfast bars because you know you think about breakfast at hotels oh, in like America. Best. Yeah, and it's like when you Mexico, go overseas, oh Mexico. God. Oh my God! Yeah, it's like ten million different fresh types guava of grains, juice, grains Hello. and seeds, and like yogurt yeah. and all sorts of different like hot foods. Like breakfast encompasses everything in Mexico. I don't go to Mexico unless my hotel is all inclusive and has 16 <laughs> types of fucking restaurants. Because let me tell you, I'm a buffet guy, all right? Like the only <laughs> place in the United States that has a real buffet is Las Vegas and it's called the Bellagio and you can get anything there. But beyond that, you go to Mexico, you go to these five star resorts and they're not all five stars in my mind. But the fucking buffets, these people know breakfast. They know breakfast, they know lunch, they know dinner. The only thing they don't know is lobster. They get these fucking weird ass looking Caribbean lobsters <laughs> and I'm from fucking Massachusetts. We're near the Cape and Maine lobster. That's real lobster, folks. But besides that, everything you guys do is delicious. I mean, I'm Jewish. Yeah. We stop at breakfast. We have locks and then it's just all over. We should have the Italians <laughs> fucking cater everything else. But like Mexico, breakfast is muy buen. Yeah. Bien? Oh, no. yeah. 
bien. Oh my god. <laughs> Mi, muy bien. Oh my god. You don't need to speak Spanish. That's... It's fine. <laughs> I'll have the eggs, Benny, please. <laughs> <laughs> So we've covered uh, a variety of topics uh, so yeah. far. This is uh, this has definitely been enlightening. Uh, Rodolfo, <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing now? Now that there is no touring, and uh, you, you mentioned that you're recording yeah. and composing yourself. How's that going? Yeah. So, well, I've been teaching a bunch at the university, but obviously everything is at home. And, yeah. And how how long have you been teaching professionally? Uh, like 12 years. Wow. Yeah. Like that. yeah. So, so since you were like 18? <laughs> so no, you're like, you, you played drums for like two years and you're like, I'm just going to teach this. I've mastered it. <laughs> yeah. No, I wish. I've been very lucky to have that. Especially, man, the financial situation is dire for a lot of artists. Yeah. I mean, for everybody. Yeah. So it's been probably education. Has but the, been whole, the, the Julio money continued. makes it makes it worth it. Like you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> It's if definitely you're not good. Touring, I don't say, I, but I don't say no to that gig when it comes along, for sure. Um, but I've just been recording. I have some, obviously, some friends in town that I've been playing with forever, and they've all been like writing a ton of music. So we've just been recording remotely our parts, mm. and it that kind of took off. So we've done about thirty-eight songs. Wow. Oh my pandemic. god. This That's is the year of the lot. album. We're interviewing yeah. Angel Vivaldi, yeah. one of our favorite guitar players, tomorrow. And I remember seeing one of his statuses on Facebook. This is how lame I am. I'm, I'm quoting someone else's social media saying, <laughs> hey, musicians, attention. Stay home and write an album. Stop planning your tours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and like, I'm afraid that when I come out with my next album, there'll be seven million repressed bands that are like, Journey got back together. <laughs> the Rolling Stones have a four bo a CD box set coming out of all yeah. original music. Like, totally, man. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it's a, just been recording a lot. I've been also just trying to keep up with the times because the teaching thing, you know, it's all these new platforms to how to do sure. rehearsals. Yeah, like, that's like, gonna be a challenge. Yeah, all these things, and there's so much administrative work to plan for to see how we're gonna do classes next semester and stuff. So that's kept me super busy and stressed, to be yeah. honest. <laughs> about like just trying to keep up with all these. Yeah, things. can imagine because you're not only. I imagine the job itself is all encompassing, but now you got to kind of come yeah. from a whole new perspective. And yeah, it changed the whole thing. You have to learn how to teach in a, but in a different atmosphere. Rodolfo, let me ask you this though. But at what point do you start saying it's my fault that you're stressed <laughs> out? Because you play jazz, that's stressful. And then you play with Julio Iglesias, <laughs> that's stressful. Like, that's next year you're going to tell me you're going to be a front of yeah. house engineer. You're like, yeah, I've I know. decided <laughs> at whatever age you are now, I just want to fucking sound. I feel like we're the same in this regard. It's, it's great, like we right? love being in precarious situations and then being saying, stressed out listen, about it. I, I feel bad. I want to say I feel long. bad for you, but like everything you tell me, and like, and I want to say I feel bad for Corey, but like I feel like if Corey didn't have something to be stressed out and anxious about, then then he there'd be no reason for him to get out of bed. I would just be a full blown alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by Miller, our sponsor that doesn't exist yet. Right. Yeah, here's my. Yeah. I, I transitioned John, from coffee to alcohol in the period of one hour. Johnny. Walker can sponsor me. Nice. It'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so that's what I'm. That's what I'm doing. Just yeah. trying to trying to do all that. And I'm actually trying to go home to Costa Rica for. for good some luck with weeks. that. Yeah. yeah. Just to just to change it up. Yeah. I mean, it's been yeah. nice to be home, but it's getting to the point where yeah, I just need a to do the same thing, but at least sitting down somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> right. 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 You mean like on a beach? That's nice. Yeah, that's what I'm trying. My sister lives in a in the beach. I'm trying to go. Move oh, but my that's right. You're in Miami. You're already in a nice place. Like I'm in Massachusetts, man. Like it pretty much just like rains and then it snows and it's then like, sometimes it's hot. But it's, it's 137 there. degrees yesterday. So like I mean, I went out to get sun, but then I felt like I had to go back inside. It was like Egypt, but then it was cold like an hour later. Yeah. So yeah. Costa Rica sounds great right right about now. Oh yeah, yeah, and no, it's nice here. It's super nice, but. I started doing some gigs when this first opened up, and I'm now I'm rethinking it because yeah, stay I'm, home, man. Danger. Wear a friggin' yeah. mask. Yeah. yeah, people don't really. People are like here, like acting like pretty normal, and I get it. You have to get back to it, but it's the numbers are scary. I don't know yeah. what to believe. Well, yeah. I'll tell you yeah. something right now. My girlfriend is a nurse, and there is a whole Holiday Inn in Taunton, Massachusetts, that's designated for people with COVID. 
Yeah. And she goes and takes care of those people, and all the people that come out of the jail go through there before they go back into society. And let me tell you, people are fucking dying. And I know there's all these conspiracies and all that, like, yeah, a guy like died on a motorcycle, but they said he died of COVID. Sure, I'm sure there's plenty of fucking tomfoolery. I think everyone lies. Like, I, I hate everyone equally, and I think everyone's just as fucked. CNN is just as fucked as Fox. It's just as fucked. They all suck. I don't believe any of you. But that said, I have seen with my own two eyes... Yeah, that yeah. this is real. And I'm not a historian, but I've gone and seen the pictures from 1918 of the swine flu. And I've read the stories of the difference between Philadelphia and Detroit or whatever the fuck it is. Uh, and this is an exact mirror of that. And here's how I feel about America. I feel we're like alcoholics that like, we're trying to get that six month chip and Five months and three days in, we're just like, fuck it, tequila. <laughs> and then we're right back on the wagon. So we got so far, and if we just stayed home, we would have been fine. Just like Sweden and New Zealand. Because they're led by competent people that say, hey, science is real. And people die from this shit. If you stay home from a short period of time, the smart people talking to me will say that we can go out. In Boston, when they said stay home for two weeks, we're like, dude, I can't not go to Dunkin' Donuts for two <laughs> fucking weeks. And now I can't work for a year. So fuck you, yeah. United States, and all the dumb mouth breathers fucking <laughs> spreading the disease. You fuckers, stay home, be socially fucking distant. <laughs> it's fine. You don't have to wear your mask in the car like a fucking stupid person. Oh You're the God, only God. one there, you dumb oh. person. But if I'm walking outside and there's no one around, don't wear it. But you can stay home. Like, there was a pregnant chick I saw on my fucking Facebook saying people were yelling at her for not wearing a mask because she's pregnant and she can't wear a mask because it's not good for, I don't know, CO2. I don't fucking know why. But you should stay home. Stay home. Okay, and she's like, so I already had COVID. <laughs> and guess what? They say that if you already had it, you could still get it again. So like, fuck uh, it. I'm going to stay home and not die. All right. Well, the point is, thank yeah. goodness for technology. We can all yeah. continue to be positive and creative and share the wonderful fruits of our labor without yeah. being outside and infecting people. And Rodolfo <laughs> is in the lovely scenery of Miami, maybe Costa Rica. We're all yeah. good. Well, we love oh. you. I don't, I don't want, the, la, the last thing, the last thing, as I get all nihilistic, as I get all nihilistic. There's and, and always people, one massive rant there, in there, every there, episode. There, it had to come sooner or later. So, but here's the thing I want to know. So now that we've just gone from like the total doldrums of my fucking nihilistic personality. Let's go to something positive. What made you decide that music was your calling? Like, was there a moment that like you were on stage or you were with your friend or you heard a song and you just said, this is my superpower and I'm gonna do this? I think it was the, the particularity that I had my best friend looking to move to study music. So I was like, okay, yeah, I have somebody else to try this with. Mm -hmm. If I would have been on my own, probably wouldn't, wouldn't have done something else. And then just things, like worked yeah, so, out so yeah so it was very passive it just kind of happened right it yeah seems like yeah totally yeah 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 i still that's, i still owe it to nice. him <laughs> that he was more he was more practical he really yeah. did know that was his thing and i just kind of tagged along yeah yeah that helps a lot to have someone i mean like caroline my best friend you know is the same thing you know she she moved to miami at the same time that i did and we kind of had each other to navigate through the professional world you know and that's a lot of times it's easier to network and play with other people and you've got a buddy or somebody that's also doing it yeah. i call Corey so. and i go hey Corey, we were in a movie i think it's on tv should we be getting money <laughs> and that's like pretty much the extent of like you know what I have going on. It's like, oh, we were in a Christmas movie. It's showing on like TV on Lifetime all the time. Like, AMC. should I get it? AMC? Yeah. Should, should we and get? No, a, and no, we didn't get money. No, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, this professional so world sounds awesome, but I think Corey and I are, as you refer to it, Gen Pop. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, By the way, I didn't know what that meant. I just want, I just want you to I know. Never I never called you Gen Pop. No, I, I just no, referred to I, Gen Pop. I, I like you that. Know, you want to know good. how I know I'm Gen Pop? Because I didn't know what that meant when you said it. <laughs> Jason knew what it meant because he like he laughed at you going, oh my God, she's so elitist. She used the word Gen Pop. I thought it was a genre. I'm like, is 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 there a girl named Jen with a new pop fucking I don't know, genre? I, I want to change it? the name of the podcast, though. Oh Gen, my God. Gen Pop. <laughs> 
Welcome to Gen Pop. Totally somewhat unrelated, but also related. I heard a great quote the other day and I wish to God I could remember who said it or maybe I read it, but it's, it's that the only thing that spreads faster than coronavirus is ignorance. (laughs) That's true. So not that that reminded me of anything, but I just, (laughs) Well, we're we're coming up. We got we got about five minutes left. And we're gonna let you get out of here, Rodolfo. Uh, we appreciate you coming on, man. It's been enlightening. Like it's it's great to talk to to yeah. someone who's taking your path and, and who's doing it at your level. Um, but it's not like we, we've had the chance to talk to, to people at in very different circumstances. It seems like we've had we've had um, Jason Costa, who who has been playing touring since he was since basically since you started playing drums at that, at that age in a van that was breaking down all across the country and, and getting into fights and all these things to where he is now and then hearing your story and and the other people we've talked to and there's so many similarities it's crazy mm-hmm. it's that's, it's like that's the funny. mindset it's the mindset yeah. seems very very kind of like all, all like holistic in the sense that you're like i like music i want to make a living doing totally. this like let's see what happens yeah. and and being in the right place the right time being prepared and all that stuff, it, it, there's so many um, parallels between other people's stories. Yeah, well, yeah, what I've learned is that the, the desperate the desperate people don't get picked. Because like I, I've, I've been trying since <laughs> I was really, really young. And every single day I said to people, I, I'm lucky because I've known I've wanted to do music forever. But I, I could barely say I'm a professional. You know what I mean? So like, I think because like I'm like that girl on the you know on, on, on that didn't get the rose. I'm like, but please, but please love me, invite me back on the Bachelorette. That like, ev- the only way I'll ever get a gig is empathy. <laughs> <laughs> I I th- think sympathy more. <laughs> well, I'm hoping empathy on behalf of Siobhan because I would really like to be in Star Set as a keyboard player slash DJ. So I'm hoping empathy, but sympathy well, is okay with me as well. We'll keep plugging it in every episode. Eventually, it'll. It'll come to fruition, right? <laughs> if we ever get back to the I know. world as we know yeah. it, well, the music we, world if, as we know it. If we do, I think uh, Ben and I, the Gen Pop, are going to have to fly down to Miami and check out some of these jazz gigs. So we you can have learn some to. Stuff. It's, so yeah. it's so fun. We can stay at Siobhan's apartment yeah. and take over her place, Corey. It's awesome. <laughs> and Rodolfo oh. lives not far from yeah. me down the street. We're yeah. in a similar neighborhood. Well, so Maybe Rodolfo will put you up and you can take over his place. <laughs> and I can take over Siobhan's place. Well, because one of the first things Siobhan said to me is that's what people do in the music world. They just go invite each other to each other's places and say, I'm coming to Miami. And then they'll stay as long as they want. So like... I know I can just go and say, hey, Siobhan, I'll take care of your hedgehog. And then I could be there for 10 days and she won't get that mad. Yeah, it's a great place. Yeah, you should do it. It is, yeah. It is an awesome place. Yeah. Lots of pillows with sequins. Oh, my God. Well, that's just my apartment specifically, but there are plenty of sequins to be found in Miami. That's for sure. Oh, Oh, yes, there are. Yeah. yeah. Um, So, yeah, Rodolfo, uh, one more time. Why don't don't you give a shout out to any projects you're working on? Where can people find you, find out more about you? Yeah, just my website, I guess, RodolfoZuniga.com. Um, I have a, an artist page for my group that's called Surfaces. Uh, Siobhan's on that. And there's some, definitely some videos on YouTube with, the, with that group that you can check out from our recording that Great hasn't music. been released, but from the studio sessions. And um, that's as much as I can handle for yeah. <laughs> promotion nowadays. Um, but there's plenty of stuff there. So. When you put uh, an ad on Craigslist, do you tell looking for guitar players with only one amp? <laughs> no, but that would be amazing. I should just do that for the hell of it. See how jazz that's, guitar that's another is t-shirt. only one amp. <laughs> yeah, that's another t-shirt. Yeah. I just think it's hilarious that like we play like heavy music and I have a whole wall of 412 cabinets for real. Like I have a Slayer size wall of 412 cabinets and I'm like, I'm never turning those on because they, they cost a lot because I'm cheap. I don't want my electric bill to go up. Like I got all LED lights because they're way, they're five watts versus 50 watts. But like, I, I, I don't, and even when I started playing with an amp live, my last few gigs, I've gone from a hundred watt amp to like a 75 watt amp to a 50 watt amp. So now my practice amp is 30 watts. And I'm like, this thing's fucking loud. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't understand <laughs> how I could go play the espresso bar and show yeah. up with my fucking two twins and just be like, hey guys, with my fucking four tens, ABYing it while your drummer is just playing with like brushes. It's a <laughs> movement. And it's literally yeah. that, literally exactly that. It's a big movement. Man. Yeah, well, wait till those guys get a little bit o- older and the movement's going to be called yeah. hashtag a leave. Because <laughs> yeah. let me tell you, as, a, as an aging rock guitar player, there's a point where you decide there's too many stairs in this world to carry another Mesa Bookie 412 cab down. Yeah, man. Yeah. The, those are 
crazy, crazy heavy. Well, I told Cor that Corey said he got mad at me because one, one of the first times I ever reached out to him was to ask him if I could use his amp, but I saw him playing with a 5150 PV amp, which is the heaviest fucking thing made of complete dark matter. <laughs> and like, I'm like, dude, this guy doesn't mind carrying shit. So like... <laughs> That's that was my whole reason because I didn't want to bring. Why the I also have a Kemper now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, uh, and a limp. Yeah. Yes. My God. <laughs> On that note, Ben, you want to take note. it home? Hey, Rodolfo. First off, we want to say stay safe. Thank you so much for being a part of this. And, thank you, my dear and, friend. Yeah, thank and, you, and thank you for pleasure. reiterating all the things that everyone has been saying that's much more successful than myself and Corey about music. <laughs> for all the people that would like to be successful, you're giving them the tools that they need because had I known this years ago, just like had I had Adderall in college, I'd have a master's degree too. <laughs> and with that, 2020, see you next week or whenever. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me.